All right, Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. Sorry about the, just and just pray that uh, we can get that room uh, cooled, uh, which I, I'm telling and tell you now we're going to try. We're going to have to cool this room as much as we can because we're going to try to force cool air up into that room through the window, through the stairwell. So it's just how it has to be today. Revelation two verse eighteen. Under the angel of the church inside Tyre, write these things. Saith the Son of God, who hath eyes like unto flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. Again, I don't think that that was her real name. But Jesus called her that name. He has a right to. He knows Jezebel. He knows who she is. And that's sort of what we've been learning. Which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Uh, the things that we've learned so far about this particular woman was that, number one, the church, in essence, gave in to her. They gave in unto her. They suffered, which means allowed that woman, Jezebel. The church should have never allowed that to take place. Jesus, when he's judging this church, he's not just judging Jezebel. Understand this. He's judging the entire church for allowing this to happen. Okay? And take that... For, for what it's worth, uh, from time to time, I'm going to be gone from here. I'll be preaching someplace else, or I might be on vacation, or whatever. Now, I'm pretty picky about who comes in to fill the pulpit while I'm gone. That doesn't mean that whoever preaches in my absence, that we see eye to eye on every little thing, so I wouldn't judge them on certain things but if I called if I was going to be gone say and I called a preacher and the preacher was going to come and fill the pulpit and while I'm gone his wife comes in says he's sick but he said I could preach in his place that's your that's your fault if you let it happen that's your fault Okay, um, uh, or if someone and this this actually happened, I uh, took a trip to Kenya. The young man that I thought I trusted at the time to fill the pulpit, his first uh, appointment, his first assignment, teach Sunday school, blew it came out with false doctrine that I was aware that um, he had been introduced to it, but he assured me that he wasn't part of it. Now that I'm halfway around the world and can't be here, he's filling the pulpit in my place and he immediately comes out with it. And my wife recognized it bunch of other people in the church recognized it and uh, I got a call when I did not want to get a phone call but they dealt with it the best way that they could they tried to deal with it in a Christian manner but they in essence took the young man aside and said you can't do that here you can't preach that here and he respected that after that, realized he had done something wrong. And while I was in Kenya, he continued to fill the pulpit. And I was glad that the church, for the most part, some people didn't handle it very well, but for the most part, the church handled it, I think, in a Christian way. But in this particular case, Jesus is getting onto this church. You're allowing this woman, number one, she is self-appointed. She calleth herself a prophetess. 
Meaning G Jesus is not anywhere here saying, I called her a prophetess. Boy, she went wrong. Jesus never called her. She called herself. She appointed herself. She put herself in that position. She took over a portion of the church, obviously, and began to teach false doctrine. So we were looking at the symbolism of Jezebel, uh, what she represents. She represents ultimately mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And we'll see that uh, here shortly. Uh, we mentioned a few Sundays ago that she, Jezebel, was involved in witchcraft. Serious, serious witchcraft. And so is, so is Babylon. Babylon is called in Nahum 3, 4, the mistress of, the mistress of witchcraft, the well-favored harlot that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. God mentioned in Ezekiel twenty two eighteen, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Thou shalt not allow a witch to live. Uh, Deuteronomy eighteen ten. I'm just going back over some of the verses to kind of catch up on uh, where we need to be this morning. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or the useth divination, or observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Micah 5, 12, And I will cut off all witchcrafts, out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. These are all linked together. Galatians 3, I mentioned the TV show, Bewitched. They got it from this verse. In fact, in Dora, and I mentioned this last Sunday, the, the witch from that TV show, in Dora, they got that name from the Bible, the witch at Endor, who brought up familiar spirits, gods literally out of the earth to deceive Saul, to, talk, to pretend to be Samuel the prophet. Uh, that's what this witch at Endor did. And that's whoever, whoever came up or created the show Bewitched knew their Bible. They knew something. And they created this character named Endor and they got it directly uh, from the scriptures. Now, uh, turn to Revelation chapter 17. I said all that to say this. Revelation 17. Jezebel is, uh, we call it a foreshadow, a type, a symbol of. I, I would say that there are, the Bible teaches you about two primary spirits. You have the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost, it's called. The term holy means exactly what it means. God's Holy Spirit will never lead you astray. God's Holy Spirit will never lead you into sin. God's Holy Spirit dwells in those whom Christ has sanctified through His blood. Uh, you cannot be lost your life filled with sin, rejecting God, and be full of the Holy Spirit. It's not possible. So there is the Holy Spirit on one side, part of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Then you have another spirit. Mystery Babylon the Great. We'll read about her. Revelation 17, verse 1. There came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come thither. And I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. The language of the Bible, God's not going to, when it comes to evil, he's not going to spin it in a nice way. If it's whoredoms, God's going to call you a whore. If you lie, God's going to call you a liar. And this is how fights start in bars, isn't it? Did you call me a liar? No, I just said, no, you call me a liar, aren't you? And that's how a fight starts. Well, if you lied, what is God going to call you? He's going to call you a liar. If you committed adultery, what is God going to call you? An adulterer, a whoremonger, a whore. If that's your lifestyle, that's what God is going to call you. So he says, 
I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm leaning toward preaching part of the message that I preached yesterday at that funeral. I'm leaning toward it. I got here this morning and I, I got to thinking about it and I thought, well, I don't know. I just preached it yesterday, but, but it's about God's judgment. Uh, people say, I don't want, nobody has a right to judge me. Well, you're right. Nobody in this world has a right to judge anybody. Except, of course, when we elect judges to sit on a bench, they are, and this is God-ordained, this is actually in the Bible, it's in the law, God elected judges and selected judges, men, to judge over the conduct of men. God gave man laws, written laws, and said, here, abide by these laws, and if you don't abide by these laws, I will set somebody in judgment over you, and you bring your case to that judge, and if that judge finds you guilty at the mouth of two or three witnesses, then you're going to suffer the penalty of whatever it is you did. So in that case, yeah, God does appoint men, I guess women, to be judges over people. We know the um, Deborah was one of the judges of Israel in the book of Judges. She was a female judge. God chose her to be the judge over Israel. But anyway, I'm just pray for me about the message this morning because I'm leaning toward that. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Do you think politicians sleep around and get away with it? <laughs> yeah. It's a, I, th I guess it's a power thing. Because you have a lot of power you can make a phone call, get away with stuff, okay? Um, I'll tell you a true story about that situation. Who remembers the DC madam? Anybody remember that? Um, she was a high class prostitute ran a business, Washington, D.C., and I'm sure she wasn't the only one. But um, her specialty, she didn't have gals out on the street. Her specialty was big businessmen, political men, men who were staying at five-star hotels, people coming from other countries to conduct business with the United States of America, uh, certain heads of state or their underlings and so on. And she, of course, as does the women in her profession, she had a black book with names and phone numbers. And um, I don't know what she did but you figure a woman like that, uh, Pelfrey was her name. It's her last name, Pelfrey. You figure a woman like that, she's got, a, she's got names, phone numbers of well-known people. They're just going to let her go. She's never going to get arrested. Well, I don't know who she made mad, but she made somebody mad. And all of a sudden, they're prosecuting her. And got her on all these charges of prostitution and pandering and all of this stuff that goes with it. She was actually interviewed during her trial. And the interviewer asked her, uh, are, do you have, number one, do you have a safety policy? In other words, if something happens to you, does somebody else have a copy of your black book? She said, oh yeah, I'm not stupid. 
And he asked this question too, and he said, just, to, just for the record, you're not planning on committing suicide anytime soon, are you? And she said, absolutely not. She said, I believe I'll win the case either at trial or on appeal. I'm going to win this case. And she says, I'm going to see it through the end. I have no plans on committing suicide. May 1st, they found her hanging in her parents' shed. Okay? Now, I don't know how it happened. I just don't think she committed suicide. Just doesn't sound, doesn't sound right to me. Yeah, it's just like Epstein. Yeah, Hillary did it. <laughs> she found Bill's number in there. And, uh, anyway, th listen, Babylon, and, and here's this, why we're having this conversation. That, that woman, Miss Pelfrey, how much power does she have in Washington, D.C.? How much control does she have? How much influence does she have? Okay? Believe it or not, the CIA, KGB, the Mossad, they will use women for this very nature. Do you remember, he was, he was Bill Clinton's chief advisor. And he said, he got caught with a prostitute. And the prostitute said that Bill Clinton's top advisor told her that, yeah, we do have UFOs in Area 51. Okay. Do spy agencies use women or men like this to gather and collect information? Absolutely. So what are we looking at here? Look what, look what she does. She, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. She's more powerful than they are. Was Jezebel more powerful than Ahab? Absolutely. Without a doubt. And let me say this, very, in the Bible, very rarely, very rarely does the person who has authority, very rarely do they make their own decisions. In almost every case, they are counseled into the decisions they make, the good ones and the bad ones. Eve to Adam. Esther to King Ahasuerus. Only hers was good counsel. Okay? Abigail to David, who David later married. She begged David, please don't come and kill me and my family. Please don't do that. David put his sword away and he said, I promise I won't touch you guys. In fact, thank you. You saved me from committing a great sin. And I'm just telling you, in some cases, that does not the church have favor with our Lord Jesus Christ? Will he not listen to us when we call unto him and pray and ask him for things? Yes. So think about what this means. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. What they just did was they just gave yielded over their authority and their power to this one woman. And this woman is going to use that power and authority to get everything she wants. Now we find out at the end of Revelation 17 that they get it back on her. But that's what that means. That's what that implies. That's this is, the, this is God's way of telling you what goes on in Jefferson City, Hillsboro, Washington, D.C., Moscow, the Vatican, and every other country, city, county, you name it, where there is civic authority, I guarantee you, 
Mystery Babylon somehow, some way is figuring out a way how she can get in charge of everything behind the scenes. That's how it always works. And when she commits fornications with the kings of the earth and the, the, it says the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Let me ask you this question. Right now, is this a clean society that we live in? And the sad thing is, in some cases, it's worse in the churches than it is in the bars. That's the sad part. Let's pray. We doing okay up there, John? John says, I'm nice and cool up here. Father, we do ask for your blessings and your grace. Lord, we ask God that you humble us. Father, we know how the enemy works. We know how Satan does his thing. We know how Babylon, what she does, what she's responsible for. We pray, dear God, Lord, that you would keep us safe. Keep us out of the reach of the devil. Lord, we just thank you, God, for this lesson. Though it was brief, we thank you for it. Ask you to bless your word now in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen.